Golden Masir is a large river in Cyprinid. It's certainly the largest fish in Bhutanese rivers. Despite all that, you know, uh, very little has been done to protect and conserve the Golden Masir. Probably of all the masirs in Asia, and they're only found in Asia, are the golden masir is the one that is the most revered, the most beautiful because of its golden fins and its golden scales, and because it is one of the eight auspicious symbols of Buddhism. I <laughs> Hold Then you me the Maba, the Zani, me, the Gini, me, the other Luda, the Zum Zum Dale, and no Melari. You must be a record, Simon Lanjo, Kiwa Hotel. They give a Tobachin, Turgot, Matabachin, the Hitler team at the Black. ยามาดินําลงเก็บที่จาดินเซนเซนมาติ้งติ้งบีบอกว่าเนจิดุกเทวะล่ะชอบมาบักที่ชุ่มเนาะแต่อาชีพขันนาร์เวจินเตลัน
Siya narunong jack niya ang head. Chung ko hindi kasi the common ay zumbila. Dali, ano, chuchung ko dito dato zumbi na bechang kasi dadi ay zumbila. Dali, the chuchi ay zumbila niya madi. Tapos yun le da loha di si kini nale da si kini juicy ba dalo ano le zunta masip ba maparogi di da zunta masip ba di zosu mela da ang siyempre da kailan di da ro da chuje pokeup di dalo ba ang si kung da kulo da sunjab di dalo ba ang si kini ano le misun si ang si kini kailan ba da ang si kini da zuma masip ba ang siyempre di zosu ins yunil ano le hindi yata di Ini mesti cipta di jurus di di bawah meja sini mila. Shungi ngaji lu jabjur na, ta jabjur na ambil di ngaji ki, ta yami be masyarakat, ta lesum zincung be, ta lesum dazim thap, ta han ben di kita, ta shung gunar ki khatul be ajin, jam ki sochon khan nai, ta le nyagi zi disu nai, ta le phab disu nai, ro sanam ki khatul be ajin, ta apa gudu lo, ta le am cukli lo, ta le ta sisi kopi lo, ema lo, anju garan am be ta ngaji sida, Tanya mana dah cipta di dah lesa ini kerja sesuatu ni lah. Dah ziru semedi ngaji dah. Ini mesti enam sami cuci cungku bendi enam sami cuci hama gula. Tapi zaman na, tapi kenta cuci imbe roda cuci nalu biar cuci nob zoom cuci melaku. Rosir di kaca me, kalau ni na zaman na kenta cuci, kaca biar cuci. Jadi, nampak macam mana? Ngaji, ngaji, ni alam bayi lah. Cong ni, si mang ni, kangai. Jadi, nampak macam mana? Jadi, rere ni macam 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 lah. Ni mah dah mam di mana dia? Tapi dah dah mam dah demi kita dah dewa bikun di dah milo musuh cipe. Tapi nampak milo dah dah yagi jo. Dale the legal disu mazhab ji gosu, dale project dale lam disu gosu be dale asci da mata asci nyam jas nu asci nila. Ta ane bendi ngaji da nyam da nyam maju ni dale ngaji da ko thob zoom daro, da ngaji da ngaji da down asci siro, da ngaji ta ni isi, da ngaji khelin ane bi asci nila. Da ngaji nyama be ngaji na gumpas si jam tu dia nila, ane dale napa ngaji ta nyam tu dia nila. Kung pa kaya siya tuloy nila, tara na ba di maging singkam sa mga tao sa isip nila? In 2014, Bhutan got concerned about what the impact of dams might be on the rivers, on the river ecosystems. So people on the board of uh, WWF invited the Fisheries Conservation Foundation to come over to look at the rivers, to talk to people, see what was going on, and then make a recommendation on what type of biological information is really needed for developing conservation strategies. Most of the research has been done in India and Nepal, and so nothing from Bhutan. 
And when you look at the landscape of Bhutan and the rivers here, um, we felt that you know it's much. Uh, uh, it could be a much different um, selection pressures, much different um, behavior here than in other uh, other parts of the Golden Mystery Range. This study uh, will tell us, you know, when the golden marshes migrate to Bhutan, when and where do they spawn, how do they react to changing water flows, and all these are important data to come up with strat better strategies for protecting and conserving the golden marshy, not just in Bhutan, but uh, everywhere else that where this fish is distributed. It's the first research study of, of Messier in Bhutan, both chocolate and golden Messier. It is the first radio telemetry study ever, anywhere within its range. We believe there are probably in at least seven systems. Uh, certainly like the Punasan Chu, the Mangdachu, the Dangmachu, Amachu, uh, Wangchu, the Mao Chu, the Nira Amachu, they definitely have them because we know that they're there and maybe some of the other ones. All on the big southern rivers that are right along the border that drain out. The Masir is actually a group of species of large Asian carps in the minnow family. So they're giant minnows. There's probably 20 something species of them. Uh, two species are found in Bhutan, the chocolate masir that gets up to maybe eight kg at the biggest uh, and they're very plentiful. And then there's also the iconic golden masir which gets over 50 kg and uh, is not nearly as common as the uh, chocolate masir. I'm doing is I'm testing that uh, the receiver is one working correctly. We want to make sure that it's recording data. Um, each receiver gets a new SD card. This is where the data is actually recorded. So we have to test that that is um, working correctly and recording data. We have a test tag here. So this is actual the tag that goes into the fish. Here's the uh, antenna. So this is our test tag. So when I turn the receiver on, hook it up to the computer, it should be reading this test tag at the, at the correct frequency and the tag number. Yes. Now he's going to walk down right but below you. Good. Yeah. The river's right there, so we got this with unobstructed uh, view of it so that it will really be loud when it comes up. We should act, I mean, it should really be loud right there. Nothing will be able to swim by without us hearing it. In fact, as soon as it comes around the bend down there about 400 meters or so it'll, and gets in line of sight, this will hear it. And it'll go probably another 500 meters up. So it's almost a kilometer that we'll be able to listen to it go up. The nice thing too is there's a deep pool right here. Probably the only big deep pool in this whole stretch. So as they fight through the rapids, they'll sit there right behind that rock and rest and then go on up. See, so that'll be, it's really, it's perfect. And now we are actually walking up to the Chamkarchu River site. We have two receiver stations there. And uh, yeah, we're going to build the second one because it got damaged. We are basically walking on a, a new constructed route for the Chamkachu uh, hydropower dam. And in summers actually, there's lots of landslides around this place. And we had gone through that during the summer monitoring trip last year around June. Tracking the Masir has been very, very challenging. I mean, like, wherever the fish move, we move. The only problem is we have to take the, you know, 
uh, you know, landscape, the aerial route, whereas they take the water bodies and uh, yeah, I would say the landscape has been very, very challenging. Because of the landscape, because it's difficult to get to the river in many, many parts of Bhutan, right? The road's up here, the river's down here, you just can't get there. Um, you know, we're just, uh, we just do the best we can. We just uh, completed rebuilding the second uh, station on the Champachu stretch, which is so important to be you know, placed here because if fishes actually cross over the first, you know, the station, which is just about uh, one half a kilometer up from the confluence, then once they cross over that, if they really swim like you know this much of distance, like 15 kilometers inside the Champachu, it means like they are actually using this river you know, to spawn or to do any of those. So it's so important to have the second station here. Mashir is, you know, like, oh, Mashir is a monster. You need to have a very good skills how to angle the fish, to angle them and bring it them to you know the right place where you can land the fish is much more important. We tried fly fishing, we tried cast netting, we tried spin fishing, and from at the end of the trip we found out that spin fishing was more effective to catch a bigger marshes. For us, we do not go for small fish marshes because our aim is to catch a marsh here which is taggable, which has to be uh, a good size where we can insert a thumb size tag inside their bellies. So with all that, you know, reasons we actually opt for spin fishing. To be our anglers, we need to understand more about you know, like the behavior of fish and if you're not trained in how to angle a fish, no way that you're going to catch a fish. And it went out, went in at one fifty four. One fifty four. All right. Tag number nineteen. All right. The surgery starts at two eleven.
We have friends everywhere we go, you know, that uh, know who we are and wave and smile and bring us bung chung and other things, you know, and so it's, yeah, it's really, it's spectacular. I mean, it, you know, the science alone would be rewarding, but the personal contacts that we have with the Bhutanese people are what make this something s totally special. It makes this project uh, like nothing else we've ever done before. Sometimes you have to make a decision that a scientist wouldn't like because it's an economic benefit. Sometimes you have to make a decision that, that is for the fish rather than for economics because in the long term maybe that's more important. You know, Certainly humans have a place on this earth, but so do the fish. It is, uh, it is remarkably built fish. Sturdy, hardy, and yet very sensitive. Long, it's got a, a kind of a flat part to its head where you can just tell that it's powering up these rivers and these rapids. You've seen the river and the water bodies, you know, and the landscape. The gradient at which the river flows and the rapids, they are built for such heavy duty, you know, rugged environment. I would love to see how they power up these, uh, these rapids because from our tracking data, we know they travel far and fast in, uh, in low water. So, uh, just so, so strong. Our goal was originally to have 10 fixed receiver stations on these two rivers and then down on the Manas after the confluence. But then we expanded the study and so now uh, we have 17 receiver stations much further up because in our original setup our tagged fish swam past, way past our farthest receivers. So far what we know about this fish is like they are moving to spawn. Each population of golden masir in different uh, water bodies, uh, they have their own uh, home stream and they grow up from fry to fingerling and they swim back into the main river and when they are of the reproductive age and size, they are coming back to the same home stream and different population, distinct, distinct golden masir populations are behaving very differently from one another. Kalangchuri <laughs>
Sometimes in, in fish, people don't think about fish the same way that they think about wildlife. But really, I think for Bhutan, the golden masir are the tigers of the water. They're royal fish, you know, they're the royals of the whole river, actually. Hooking a golden masir is a different thing, but landing one safely is a totally different challenge. A few years ago, I had a, a tough time because I hooked a, a biggest monster, and it took me around uh, four or five minutes to land. Wow, Jimmy, sir, the fish that you lost today, wow, it, I think like it was you know, like, a yeah. very big one. Jimmy, yeah. I think so, yeah. They're smart. Yeah. They know how to play the current. They know how to play the rocks. They know how to play the sticks. Yes. They know how to escape your, you know, hook you on, hook your lure on a rock. Uh, and they're really, really strong. Maybe some of the strongest freshwater fish pound yes. for pound in yes. the world. So. And they're, and they're really smart <laughs> and spooky. We'll have a tough time then. If it gets, you know, like more yeah. murkier. Yeah, we'll have a tough time. That's yeah. exactly right. Royal Manas National Park, the total area is uh, 1,057 square kilometer. And this park is one of the oldest park in Bhutan. And it was established in 1963. And uh, in 1993, it was upgraded to National Park. Manas plays a very important role in, the, uh, in all fish and especially the marshes, they live in a big river and Manas is one of the biggest river in Bhutan and it's also the longest river and it has got a lot of tributaries and that's why the uh, marshes are very important to the Manas river and Manas is also very important for the marshes.
It's a big, big fish, beautiful coloration. The surgery went great, you know, couldn't be better. Perfect ending to a great day. You know, it was, it was truly spectacular. And this is really a nice big fish, special tag, you know, all set for. I get asked this question a lot, you know, why protect the golden masu? What is, what is the importance of golden masu? What economic value it has? At the end of the day, uh, we as conservatives, we don't, need, we don't need a reason to protect a species. Any time when you remove a species from uh, the system, it's going to have an impact. And it's going to have an impact that cannot necessarily be predicted. You know, there's, they're there for a reason, and until they're totally taken away, you don't know. From an ecological standpoint, it's a keystone species, meaning it's the top predator and it shapes the rest of the population. The golden masir, it's a key to the country, really, to the culture. Uh, and losing it would be a tragedy. Just think about some of the species that now we don't see and which are extinct. What, what do you feel right now? Which was seen during our parents' time. Forget about grandparents. If we do lose this fish, it's, it's a huge loss to the country and not just to the country, to the world actually. The only soundly protected species of golden masir reside in these rivers in Bhutan. This is the last bastion, the last Shangri-La, as it were, for golden masir. This is what we don't want, you know. We don't want our children in the future to say, okay, what is golden masir, you know? Chances are, you know, the golden masirs might just be available in books and internet, you know. I just, I want them to be able to see the golden masir in their time. Thank you. 